Hey everybody, this is week 13. Can you believe it? We only have three weeks left of school and that is includes finals week. So hang in there. You guys are doing fantastic. Um, we are going to look today though, or this week at late adulthood. So by definition, that is really anybody that is 65 years of old, age or older. Um, and that actually, I know we think of 65 as maybe not being that old for some of you that might seem really old. Um, but if you think about late adulthood can go for years and years and years. Um, if you have a family member who's in their 90s, guess what? They've been in late adulthood for almost 30 years or more. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I think it's important to realize that even though, um, we clump it into one, it la it can last for quite a while. So let's get started. What are the stereotypes of getting older? Now here's the deal. Some of you see getting older as being a truly negative thing. I mean, aren't you, like, you? if you remember being in class, one of you called me a boomer. I am so not a boomer because boomers really are in the this late adulthood stage right now. Um, they, uh, what, but you guys have stereotyped boomers, right? And so think about just a minute. What are some of the stereotypes that you have of getting older? Hmm. Maybe it is breaking down physically. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Um, maybe it is, ooh, being forgetful. Well, yeah, there's some very normal memory decay that takes place in your elder years. Um, but not, there are some very, very sharp people out there still mentally. Um, what are other things? Well, think about that. Do you think of anything positive? Hmm. That's kind of interesting if you really take note. So I'm going to have you watch this quick video. Um, and this video talks about how actually we are now becoming more, um, at peace and happy with becoming older. So take a quick look. There are lots of legitimate reasons to worry about getting older, like getting sick and running out of money, ending up alone. Those fears are legitimate and real. But the thing is, we need to think about how the culture in which we age shapes those experiences. I'm now a Pollyanna about aging. I'm sort of in the both sides of the story business. We hear all of the downsides very little about all the positive aspects of aging, which are um, positive and they grow, um, they grow happy. When I started thinking about all of this, um, my early old age was probably different. And one of the things that stuck in my mind early on was the emperor of cats. And when I first encountered it, seriously, I thought the most horrid champagne ever was that it came out of the penis and for me to make. This new curve shows that people are happiest at the beginnings and the ends of our lives. The midlife, the famous midlife crisis, is indeed the trough of our satisfaction. And this is true for a couple of reasons. Midlife is the time of life when typically we have maximum family responsibilities, which does mean crushing in our careers. We may have responsibility for people who are older and younger than us. It's also the time when we realize, gee, you know, I may not.
How old is old? What do you consider old to be? We see people, you probably have movie stars or musicians that you look at and you don't consider them old. However, they may be older chronologically than you even realize. So again, what is old? Um, that brings up the, the idea of ageism. Uh, basically, ageism in your book is defined as the stereotypic, intensely negative ideas about old age. So again, when you think about somebody getting old, you usually go straight to the negatives. But you know, it hasn't always been that way. Back in many, many years ago in history, actually it wasn't that long ago, uh, old age was not achieved very easily. People died young, right? Uh, we had all kinds of diseases and accidents and life was very difficult. And so nobody was guaranteed to live until they were 65 years old. Um, not that we're guaranteed that today, but it just seems like more likely than it used to be. Uh, so if a person reached that age of being in a late adulthood, they were actually seen as being wise. They were put in an honored position, almost like a sage of, um, of advice. Like they had seen the world uh, or they had been here for a long period of time. And so people went to them for advice. They went to them for their opinions because those were valued. Uh, the elderly were valued in those societies. Is that the same for today? I, I'm going to say I don't think it is as much. Um, it probably should be because, again, they've seen and done a lot more than you and I have seen and done already. But yet we seem to think we know so much more. So just keep that in mind. So we do have, I told you, you know, old age or uh, late adulthood really can span a long period of time. And so we've broken it down into sub-stages. The first one is young old, which is 65 to 74 years old, old old, which is 75 to 84, and oldest old, which is 85 and up. And I will tell you my father right now is, I think he's 70, I think he'll be 76. Um, that sounds about right. Yeah, he'll be 76 in July. Uh, for him, I asked him when he turned 75, does that feel old? And he goes, no, not yet, 80. To him, the, the age of 80 seemed like, <clears throat> excuse me, it seemed like it was, um, like that was what old was going to be. He saw his friends get to 80 and they seemed to fall apart. And for him, that is what he's not looking forward to. Although, if for some of you, he is in better shape than you. Um, he works out every day. He rides his bike. He, he is just all about being active. So, we'll see how 80 affects him. Okay, so let's go to the oldest old. Um, here are some of the issues that happen with this age. Um, well, the oldest old can become socially isolated. Uh, they can suffer from depression because again, they are socially isolated and they may have difficulties with their ADLs, which is known as activities of daily living. Um, that might be, uh, you know, getting around the house. Maybe they are, don't have balance like they used to. And so maybe they fall easily. Uh, my grandmother lived to be 97, almost. She was one week shy of her 97th birthday when she passed. Um, but she actually, um, even though she had dementia, physically she was doing pretty okay, except for her balance. Um, she would fall down, although she still insisted on climbing ladders to pick fruit out of trees and things like that. They had to go hide the ladders because she just would not, um, I think she really felt like she was still much younger, uh, but her body said something different when it came to her balance. Primary aging is normal. Um, secondary aging is due to lifestyle. So we're all going to age physically, right? It's all going to happen. We can't um, get away from it, even though we may be doing everything in our power to try to slow down the process or stop the process. 
um, it's going to happen. But there's some things that can cause us to age what we call more quickly um, because of the way we live our lifestyle. If you use and abuse your body, then your body's going to feel that much more quickly than a person who took care of their body. When I say use and abuse, what do you think that means? Well, it means um, sometimes if you smoke or drink a lot, of course, drug use, um, but even like physical usage, if you are doing heavy physical labor, I knew a guy who uh, his main job was using a jackhammer. That is very hard on the body, and he was feeling it by age 35. Um, does that mean he was old? No, it doesn't. It just means when he turns 65, think about if he's already feeling at age 35, what is 65 going to feel like? And it's due to his lifestyle. How about changes in appearance as we get older? Of course, there's some things that are just naturally going to happen. Our hair. If you keep your hair, some of you, um, your hair is going to thin or maybe fall out completely. I know some of, uh, some of you guys are probably going, nope, not going to happen to me. Huh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, you may lose your hair. Even women, your hair becomes thinner. Um, you lose the pigmentation in your hair. That's why it turns gray or white. And um, our skin becomes less elastic. The elasticity in it goes away and so therefore we gain wrinkles now again some of you are like well hey i'll just continue i'll get botox or i will get plastic surgery which you can if you look at if you know who jane fonda is if you don't look her up um she is 81 or 82 years old but she has had a whole lot of facelifts done and she is um she does not look 82 she doesn't she's kept very good care of her body over the years um, in the 80s she actually was one of the first people to make aerobic videos for people um, but she if she didn't do all those things um, she would not look as good as she does because uh, her brother and her father were both actors and they definitely aged so again, hair thinning on the head, hair, sp ooh, hair sprouting from ears and chin and nose for men. Um, again, they have those nice little, uh, little trimmer things that you can purchase for pretty cheap. I would invest in that. Uh, hair is grayer and thinner and again, loses its pigment. Ooh, age spots. Um, age spots are pools of dark pigment caused by decades of exposure at the sun, mostly on light-skinned people. So again, as you get older, you may see that your skin changes. It also becomes, your skin actually becomes thinner and more translucent. And so you can, um, not that you can see through your skin, but it just does become thinner, which also means that you are more at risk of, of injury if you bump into something, um, it bruises much more easily, but it also can tear much more easily. Our height, well, our height slowly declines over years because part of that is we have lo loss of bone mass in our spinal column. As we age, um, our, our bone mass becomes less and therefore we lose that height. Um, you can lose up to about one and a half inches. So if you already thought you were short, I hate to tell you this, it's only going to get worse. Uh, miscellaneous, ooh, yellowing of teeth or tooth loss. Uh, the yellowing of teeth is usually caused, I mean, some of it's just natural, um, but some of it is caused by what we're eating or drinking or smoking. Um, of course, if you smoke nicotine, it will definitely yellow your teeth. Um, coffee, uh, any like brown drinks, uh, soda, whatever, uh, it is going to yellow your teeth. And tooth loss, again, just a lot of um, our teeth decay, our uh, enamel becomes thinner over time, especially if you are a tooth grinder um, at night or during the day. So, and lastly, we do get wrinkles. You can fight it all you want. They are coming. 
How about changes in our senses, like vision? Well, um, I'm not sure what that's supposed to say because I think that is wrong. Cornea becomes something. Um, I don't know. But uh, basically, we are... Uh, our vision does change. We talked a little bit, maybe we talked about it in middle adulthood, but um, as you can see, I will tell you two, three years ago, two years ago, I did not have these. Uh, at, with age, your, uh, your lens becomes less flexible. And as it becomes less flexible, it doesn't uh, it doesn't help you focus as well. And so things up close. Let me see if I can find something good to read here. As something comes closer, you you end up doing this to try to focus. And so you get these things called bifocals, and uh, that helps you. But I also have, and I've had this for a while. Um, my distance vision is off. And so um, I have to get these nice little like transitional things. So always fun. Your cataracts, or you may get cataracts, which is basically thickening of the lens. Um, you can get your cataracts removed. Uh, the thickening of the lens makes it feel really, uh, or look, everything looks kind of cloudy. Um, but with thickening or with the cataracts you can have those removed what they do is they take off your lens and replace it with a man-made lens um, i will tell you the really one interesting thing about that one is that your regular lens absorbs light man-made lenses do not and so they twinkle when you look at them it's kind of a it's kind of a trip um macular degeneration again that's just another vision change uh it kind of makes it look like uh there's a hole in the middle of whatever you're looking at um and it and your people who have severe macular degeneration can go blind and then glaucoma is the optic nerve damage that can occur. Uh, changes in senses. Hearing. Uh, if you were in my Psych 101 class, we talked about this a little bit. Tinnitus. Tinnitus is that ringing in your ear. It's usually caused by uh, loud noises or ongoing loud noises. So if you like music loud in your ears, guess what? That ringing in your ears is because you've done some damage back there to um, the little hairs in your inner ear. Um, by the way, tinnitus is your incentive word. Yes, it is. Again, tinnitus is your incentive word. I just want to make that very clear. Some people are like, you didn't tell us the incentive word. My answer to that is you didn't re watch the lecture because it is in there. Um, and at an older age, often we do need hearing aids because um, again, our hear we have a hearing loss. Um, that can be something inherited. My whole dad's side of the family all have, are all hard of hearing. Um, my great grandfather couldn't hear, my grandmother couldn't hear, my father and my uncle both have a hearing aids. I already have some hearing loss, so I'm assuming that that is in my future. Taste and smell or other senses that are affected with age. I know if you are a foodie, this is bad news um, because it, we really do lose our sense of taste, but you also lose some of your smell. Um, your smell receptors diminish. Smoking does not help this. Smoking makes the, the process go faster and more extreme. Um, your olfactory bulb also begins to shrink. So that is uh, what takes in the odors and processes it um, into your brain. How about sleep patterns? Okay, so I am not even close to being elderly. I'm not even 50 years old, but I will tell you my changes in sleep pattern have already started occurring. So I feel for these people when we get older. Um, you may experience sleep apnea, which is not... Uh, it's basically an interruption in breathing while you sleep. 
Uh, there might be medical conditions though that cause you not to sleep well. Uh, maybe back problems, muscle tension, reduced circulation, ooh, frequent urination, having to get up multiple times in the evening or during the night to, to go to the bathroom. Um, that's probably one of the biggest complaints. Also, it's found that though, as you get older, you need less sleep overnight. Like you're not required. Think about an infant. Infants need about 22 hours of sleep a day, right? Does a five-year-old need 22 hours? No, they need less. And as we get older, we need less and less and less. So a person that's elderly really can get away with about six hours of sleep, six to eight. Um, most of you probably are getting eight or more. Um, or if you're not, that's what you're needing. Um, but you're not, you're probably functioning just fine without it. Uh, chronic health problems that we see in the late adulthood can be arthritis, osteoporosis, and hypertension. If you don't know what those are, arthritis, of course, is inflammation of the joints. Um, it can be very painful. It can feel like you're very stiff, um, but it can be painful, especially in cold weather. It seems to flare up. Um, osteoporosis is basically breaking down of... Um, it's because of low calcium in the bones, so it's breaking down of the bones a little bit, and it can cause, again, pain. Um, hypertension is basically high blood pressure. Uh, what happens is our, our arteries and our veins become stiffer with age. It's just a natural, you can eat as healthy as you can. Um, you may not have high blood pressure, but you will still have that stiffening of the of the vessels um, because it's just something that's age related and when that happens it takes more pressure to pump your blood through your your body and so there's just usually a natural higher blood pressure than when you were younger um, i know i have a relative who she's always had really low blood pressure and so what it's done is more caused her blood pressure to be a little closer to normal um, instead of high. So, so what can have a positive influence on our health? Well, healthy diet, right? Um, a balanced diet for senior citizens, what's that gonna look like? Well, it's definitely not going to look like a bunch of sweets or a bunch of chips and junk. It's going to look like a health, making healthier choices for somebody. Um, exercise is one. Uh, keeping active physically. What do I say? If you don't use it, you, that's right, you lose it. So if you can stay active, um, that's a really cool thing. A lot of medical insurances now actually have a program called uh, Silver Sneakers. And Silver Sneakers pays for gym memberships at times, or at least helps with the expense because they know that uh, if, if a senior citizen stays active, guess what? They're not gonna have some of the medical issues that they might if they did not stay active. Let's see, what's the next one? So what should you not do? Well, oops, um, smoke. If you are already a smoker, I know that it is probably a habit that you actually would like to get rid of. Um, maybe some of you don't, but most people who smoke wish they could quit. Um, I would just say for long-term effects, smoking is not healthy. It, of course, is linked to cancer of lung, throat, esophagus, larynx, bladder, kidney, cervix, pancreas, and stomach. Um, it is also linked to cardiovascular disease. Um, heart attack, stroke, decline in vision, taste, and smell. I will tell you, uh, when I was, how old was I? 21, 22 years old, I ended up working for a convalescent hospital um, up in Stockton. And uh, one of the things that was just very, of course, we had a lot of elderly people there, but we also had people who were not elderly. They were in their 50s or early 60s who had had major strokes. And so they were non-ambulatory at this point. In other words, they couldn't really walk on their own. They had to be in wheelchairs. Um, they were usually of their right mind at that point. The strokes had not affected them cognitively, but um, 
they all were smokers and they had all had strokes at a fairly young age, um, maybe at 40 to 45 years old. And now they were stuck living in a home. I will tell you that does not sound like a fun place to be because of a habit. So um, again, that's something just to kind of think about for the future. Um, alcohol or heavy drinking. Again, they this the story changes a lot on this. Sometimes people are saying, oh yeah, drinking your uh, one glass of red wine every day is okay, or it's actually, you know, recommended, um, but then they come back and say that's not recommended. So I don't really, I'm not going to give you any recommendations at this point, except for to say that heavy drinking um, basically can damage liver, kidneys, and again, increase risk of stroke. They're saying moderate alcohol consumption, like one to two glasses of beer, I do not know why that is spelled the wrong way, or wine may enhance functioning of cardiovascular system. Okay, we're going to take a break here and uh, get back to in your next lecture to what cognitive changes happen in late adulthood.